Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Avery and I am the Executive Director of Quanta Change. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, do you ever feel stuck? So last week in my video, I shared one way I've seen a lot of people be stuck over the past 22 years of guiding people through the Quanta Change process. Um, that was about feeling like you were stuck between an old way of doing things and having to do it that way, or to go exactly the opposite direction, which feels catastrophic, like it's just gonna blow everything up. Uh, so if you feel stuck in that way, if that resonates, go back and take a look for last week's live video on that. Um, this week, I wanna talk about a different kind of being stuck that I've also seen a lot of in my practice. So some questions to see if maybe you resonate with this form of being stuck. Uh, one question, do you know what really matters to you? Or do you know who you really are? How about, do you know what your real purpose is in life? So one of the most surprising things to me over the past 22 years is to see how many people, even extremely confident seeming people, people who seem to know exactly what they're about in life, um, really are stumped by those questions about what matters to them, who they really are, uh, what their real purpose is. So I wondered if you've bumped up against this question for yourself. Do you feel like you're not quite sure of the answer to one or maybe all of those questions? Have you explored these questions in some way? Maybe you've done therapy or some other kind of self-help work to uncover uh, who you really are inside or Maybe you've done some other kind of research or exploration, uh, some kinds of inventories to help you discover this. Has that worked? Are you feeling more clarity? Are you feeling more able to really focus in on what actually matters to you? If so, that's fantastic. It's great to find out what works for you and really go with it. So fantastic if that's helped. If not, if that has not helped, if you're still feeling a bit stumped by these questions, uh, I want you to know, like I said, you're not alone. It's a very, very common thing to uh, feel really cloudy about the answers to these questions. And it's not your fault if you have not been able to uh, discover that. And I'll explain why that's been so hard today. Um, so, you know, the one thing I want you to know is that it really is in there. The answers to those questions are in here and you can really discover them. I've seen that happen so, so many times, not only for myself, but lots of my clients. So, um, you know, this thing called learned distress really puts up a big smoke screen between us and what really matters to us, who we really are. So learned distress is the quanta change term for the feeling that you absorbed very early in life, that there's something wrong with you being just the way that you are. Learned distress, like I said, is something you absorbed early in life, before the age of two and a half, before you had any choice in the matter. And as you're absorbing this awful feeling that there's something wrong with you uh, from the people around you, your parents, your early caregivers, older siblings, you're also, your brain is really developing a survival mechanism to help you cope with, control, manage that awful feeling that there's something wrong with you. It also allows you to fit really well, sort of like a puzzle piece with your parents and other early caregivers fit well in your family. So there are six basic patterns of learned distress and its survival mechanisms. And at the end of this video, I will get into what those patterns are and how you can find out for free which one of them you have. But for now, I'm gonna say there are two basic categories of learned distress when I'm thinking about this, this conundrum of discovering what matters to us and who and who we really are. So one category keeps the learned distress buried that says, 
I don't matter. I don't matter is kind of my umbrella term for the biggest piece of learn distress that we have. It includes knowing what we want, knowing who we really are, feeling the freedom to really express ourselves, feeling safe in the world, being just ourselves, um, having what we need, having a voice. So when, when your survival mechanism keeps I don't matter buried, it's saying it's not safe for me to feel this feeling that I don't matter. Um, I need to keep it buried in order to survive. Here's the problem with that. All of your feelings, good or bad, come through one big feeling pipe uh, from your sense of self, this sort of container that stores how you feel about being yourself. So when you bury the feeling that you don't matter, you also largely bury the feeling that you do matter just for being yourself. Not for doing certain things, not for being a certain way, but just for being yourself, you matter. So when I don't matter is buried in order to survive, the feeling that you don't, that you do matter is also buried. And the feeling that you do matter is what can supply to you who you really are, what really matters to you, what your purpose is, what you're here to do, your unique purpose in life. And so what people who have I don't matter buried tend to do to survive is one of two basic things. One is just keep all the feelings under control and just do everything the right way. Keep things going the right way. Keep things just chugging along in some certain right way that, that if this is you, you know what that is. Um, the other kind of person who keeps uh, learned distress buried via their, their survival mechanism is someone who just then on top of keeping that feeling buried, they just work really, really hard to make themselves matter, to make themselves into some ideal kind of person in some way to make their lives some kind of ideal. And there's no time if you're working that hard to number one, feel the learned distress, number two, um, experience the feeling that you really do matter just for being yourself. The other sort of basic category of survival mechanisms when it comes to I don't matter is the one that um, allows you to feel you don't matter, like you're immersed in it, you're overwhelmed by it, you are swimming in it all the time, if this is you or you nodding your head, you're like, yeah, I know I don't matter. Yeah, very familiar, Sarah. Yeah, right. I, I can relate to that. And so when the feeling that you do matter is sort of out there on the surface, unfortunately, it doesn't allow the feeling that you do matter to also be out there on the surface. It overwhelms the feeling that you do matter. It shoves it out of the way and says, oh, no, no, we will not be discovering what matters to us because if we do that, we know how this goes, right? Nothing works for us. Nothing is going to work out here. I'm still not going to matter, and I'm just going to know what matters to me, but it's never going to happen. I'm never going to be able to have that, be that, express that. I'm just going to be miserable being even more disappointed in life, feeling that I don't matter and knowing how painful it is to know what I can't have. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Um, so but I'll just tell you, lots and lots of my clients who feel that way, I'll tell you about one of them, um, that has changed radically for them. So if you're feeling a little overwhelmed at that thought and me talking about it, it really can change. So there are these two kinds of survival mechanisms. So maybe you're hearing all of this and saying, well, I haven't heard this term learned distress before, survival mechanism. You're framing it a bit differently than I've heard before. But hey, I've been through a lot of therapy here. I've done a lot of work on myself. I know this thing. So if that's the case and it still hasn't changed for you, um, whether you're the buried learned distress kind or the out on the surface learned distress kind, why is that? Why hasn't understanding the problem fixed it? Well, it's because of something I call the rational brain roadblock. So this is the term for the phenomenon that when your rational brain is operating, 
there is a wall of resistance to change or a wall of, of protection around your sense of self, protecting this part of you that stores how you feel from rational level change so that your survival mechanism is protected because that's how you've been surviving. So it says you can't change this. No way am I going to let you touch this. Um, so in other words, you cannot think your way out of your learned distress and you can't think your way to your core natural well-being, that feeling that you do matter at your core either. Both of those are protected from that rational brain roadblock. So the good news is that quanta change was developed to address the rational brain roadblock and get it out of the way, get it deactivated. The way that quanta change does that is it works with your brain during sleep for two reasons. Uh, one is that sleep is the time when your rational brain is entirely shut down. And so that's when that rational brain roadblock is deactivated. And so we can get to your sense of self that stores how you feel, good or bad, and access it for change. The other reason for sleep is that that is when your sense of self is getting recharged every night when you sleep, hopefully. And so um, what quanta change allows you to do is tell your brain that you do not want to recharge with learned distress and your survival mechanism anymore. You want to stop recharging with those things because that's basically what you've been recharging with just about every night of your life. You get to tell your brain, I want to recharge with my core well-being, this feeling at my center that I am just great being myself, that I have everything that I need, that I'm completely safe, that I get to express my uniqueness in the world, that I just get to be me and that's enough. Um, so as you recharge with that well-being, your brain permanently peels off layers of learned distress. And as you can imagine, Imagine as you peel off those layers, you feel better. Um, your life works better in various ways. And when it comes to this knowing who you are, this whole big I don't matter problem, here are a couple ways that I, I generally see this change happening for people. Um, so what matters to you just emerges. You just know, just sort of like you know I'm hungry, you know when you're tired and you need to sleep kind of like that kind of knowing it's just there all of the sudden in a way that it just hasn't been before and the other thing that i really see is that instead of feeling maybe scared of discovering that you really just feel like you get to enjoy that you have permission to enjoy who you really are express who you really are live out your purpose in the world um in a way that is unconstrained in a new way for you um, and without the fear of it being ripped away from you maybe um, in the way that you felt before so let me give you a couple of examples of what that's like so the first example is someone who's more in that buried learned distress buried i don't matter uh pattern so um when he came to me, he said, here's, here's how life is, I think. So life is you work, 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 work to reach your goals. And once you've fully reached your goals, then you get to enjoy life. He described it sort of like working through, um, as he did through his college degree and just putting everything aside until he got the best grades. He had gotten through his exams and he was done. And that's when he got to actually have some fun, have some free time, enjoy some life. Only when he was all the way through his degree. Um, and he said, life is like that too, Sarah. So once I achieve all of the, the financial and stability goals that I have in my life, then I can rest, then I can relax and enjoy life. Um, so that was his ideal. Other folks have different a different kind of ideal that they maybe keep striving for, keep working for, and put away what really matters to them or even knowing that. So can you relate to that? Does that sound a bit familiar? It's not about how I feel. It's just about achieving something. Um, so if so, here's what happened for him. As he started to uncover what mattered to him, 
he found that he could sit, he had four school age children at this point, and he found that he could just spend time with his kids and really fe feel fully present instead of the time that he had been spending with his kids when he really wasn't there. His head was off in what is the work goal? What do I need to be working on? How am I going to write that report? All of that stuff and kind of filled with anxiety a lot of the time about that. Instead of feeling that way, he felt like he could just put work away at a certain point, maybe five o'clock on, on a Friday night. He could put work away and spend the time with his children. And he was really connecting with them in a new way for the very first time in his life. He felt like he could have life at the same time he was working for goals. And um, that was incredibly enriching and I'm quite sure um, really wonderful for his children also. So that's one example of what that can look like. Another example is the kind of person who, um, you know, who learned to stress was out on the surface for him. It was always there, always nagging at him. And he felt like there is no way I'm going to connect to what matters to me because I cannot take the disappointment of not having it. Um, and I know that's what's going to happen. And so um, he was nearing retirement um, and he was really starting to wonder, hey, wait a second. Once I retire, who who am I? Well, what am I going to do with all this time? Um, and I wonder if you can relate to that in some way. Maybe it's not that you're retiring. Maybe it's that your children are about to graduate and be done with high school and go off to what's next for them. And you're feeling like, whoa, I, I don't know what's next for me. I don't know what I'm going to do when that identity is not the center of my world anymore. So um, if you can relate, here's here's what happened for him. He got to retirement and he was feeling more and more anxious actually about this the closer he got. But he did retire and he actually moved to another state and bought a home with some land around it. And uh, he was saying, Sarah, I'm really worried. I don't know what matters to me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. But as he started to unlearn layers of that, once the real trigger was there, he retired, he had all of this time. What he found is, he not only knew some things that had mattered for him, to him for a long time that he enjoyed, like knitting and sewing, but he also found that he really loved working on this little piece of land that their house sat on. And he loved looking at what was going on with like the topography and the drainage of the land. And, and he was really enjoying like moving wheelbarrows of uh, gravel and dirt around to to make the land what he wanted it to be and and he found a men's group that he really enjoyed and then he found another group in the area uh, again he was new to this area so he was meeting new people and really enjoying that in a ways that were new to him and everything really opened up for him he had this new life that he really had never imagined before and was really just enjoying to the hilt. So um, if you're scared, if you're feeling like, I don't know who I really am, it's too scary to even contemplate that. Um, he's a great example of how much that can change. So if either of these kinds of patterns, examples have resonated for you, what I want you to know is that really, you can be just like my clients here and really discover more of what matters to you and who you really are, what your real purpose is in life. Um, so if you're intrigued by that, if you're wondering how that might be possible for you, the first step towards that is to find out which of these six patterns of learned distress and survival mechanism you have. And if you've done lots of work on yourself and you're thinking, oh no, not another test, Sarah, not not another profile, not another uh, way of just digging into the problem. I've done tons of that. I've seen everything. I am not doing that anymore. Nope, that's not what I'm talking about. The reason that you wanna find out which pattern of learned distress and survival mechanism you have is to find out what you're going to be getting rid of when you unlearn learn distress. 
what you're going to um, be uncovering when your natural well-being is out on the surface. So the, the oh, I forgot I was going to mention the names of these patterns. They are called the idealist, the perfectionist, the optimist, the caregiver, the defeatist, and the dictator or the benevolent dictator. Sometimes that one is called. So again, the reason you find out which pattern you have is to find out what you're going to be getting rid of, the learned distress that you're going to be getting rid of so that you can feel better and express who you really are in the world. And the way that you do that is to go to my website. You're going to take a free, in-depth, scientifically validated personality test that measures learned distress. And I will graph your answers and send you a free report that uh, details your pattern of learned distress the ways you've been surviving with that pattern of learned distress and how quanta change really could help you feel better and help your life work better, uh, help you uncover your uniqueness. So in order to do that, you go to my website, quanta change, Q-U-A-N-T-A change.com and click on the free report button. And so I, I hope that you will do that. Um, it, it doesn't take a, a huge amount of time and you can really learn so much about yourself and what's really possible for you that way. So I hope you'll do that. And thank you again so much for joining me today. Um, I hope that, that I've given you a bit of hope um, that really uncovering what matters to you and who you really are um, is, is really possible in a way that you had not known before. And I hope you, that you will join me again next week for another way in which quanta change really can help you feel good being you. Thanks so much.